What is up everyone? Kyle here and the time has finally come. I am going to unbox and review G.I. Joe Classified Series 1, my most anticipated release of the year. Let's do this. guys welcome to the channel Kyle here as usual and you guys know I've been talking about it for months my most anticipated release of 2020 the G.I. Joe classified series longtime viewers of the channel knows G.I. Joe is where I cut my teeth in the 80s the three and three force line is my favorite line of all time so many great memories of G.I. Joe so much love for me with G.I. Joe and I was so happy for the reboot uh, we're going to dive into these. We're going to talk about each one just like we normally do. Um, well, we're going to talk the good, the bad, some of the comments, some of the opinions out there we hear. We're going to talk about all of them. And we're going to go in order of numbered because they're all numbered. Uh, this being number one, Roadblock right there. So Roadblock is our first heavy hitter. Let's show the back off first. So on these, uh, the back is the same for every single figure. It's got a little diorama, awesome picture artwork. This would be great poster size. I could see this at San Diego Comic Con as like a giveaway at their table. Hasbro would have a table and have little posters, maybe 8x11 or maybe full posters of this. That would have been totally awesome to have. I don't know if I'd have room for a poster like this, but I just love that G.I. Joe artwork. And this gives us a little bit of an Easter egg in the back, seeing some of the other characters that are, I think are to come and we already know. Uh, like you see the Baroness, she pop, uh, catches my eye right off the bat there. You know she's coming in a future Target set, exclusive set. Uh, we also see the Red Ninjas on the back. We see the rest of Series 1, and we see a lot of vehicles down there at the bottom. So this is an awesome, awesome picture. Does it have Easter eggs? Does it tell the future of the line? Will we be getting vehicles? A lot of unanswered questions, but a lot of fun to uh, think about. What do we want? Are we going to see some of this? Are we going to get that Marauder tank? Are we going to get, you know, we know we're going to get the Awe Striker. Are we going to get, you know, the Armadillo? All that kind of stuff. Uh, will that be coming? The, um... So very, very cool on the back. I love the G.I. Joe artwork. Uh, it almost feels like a modern day version of that 80s artwork that we all know from the blister on the card. Uh, just the, the iconic G.I. Joe artwork. Um, the back, though, is missing one thing. And this is uh, for all figures that I see. Uh, I talk about it a lot in other reviews. I miss the days of a file card or a little blurb. We all know the old school G.I. Joes had great file cards. Probably the gold standard for file cards. Uh, it would list the person, you know, Roadblock. It would list his real name. It would talk about where he's from, where he trained, what his uh, special mission is, what his uh, number one thing he can do, what's the number two, you know? Like, hey, he's a chef. Is this uh, another job uh, in the Army or whatever? Um, but Roadblock being super iconic, I love reading there, and it makes you closer to those characters. I remember one G.I. Joe character uh, back in the day, uh, Crazy Legs, a paratrooper. Uh, it showed him from Fort Dodge, Iowa. That was right over by where my grandpa and grandma lived. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. That, oh my gosh, Crazy Legs is from where grandpa and grandma are from. Uh, stuff like that brings you a tighter knit, uh, brings you closer to the character. It, that's what you need. Um, and that goes for Marvel Legends, wrestling, whatever. I mean, you don't need the super detail. I'd love it. The super detail of the 80s G.I. Joe file card. But a blurb, a little bit of something, anything. We'll take it. Um, so some have said... And I don't like this at all, and I don't know if it's 100% true or not, but there's a G.I. Joe website, I've looked at it, and they show this stuff, so I guess it is true. But on the side of the packages here, you can see they have little, like, symbols, I guess. No idea what these mean, but you can go on the G.I. Joe uh, new website for these figures, and it decodes these symbols. And I guess in the day and age where, I mean, I think of my kids, they're on their iPads all the time. Uh, so I guess maybe kids will buy this, they'll go to the G.I. Joe site, and they'll decode these symbols. I don't know. That seems like a lot of work to me. Um, I try to put myself back in the boots of a eight, nine year old, ten year old kid. Would I have done that at that age? I guess I probably would have. I was such a GI Joe crazy nut. I would have done anything I could for more GI Joe information. Um, but it is just weird. I just don't know why you can't just do a blurb file card on the back, cover all your bases, uh, give a little bit more of a, a renaissance to the good old days, the '80s of GI Joe. I would really like to see that. Um, so that's that side of the package. Now the other side is really cool. I love the artwork on these. We'll talk about each one having artwork. 
The only gripe I've seen really with this, they need to have the same artist to have uniform artwork across. Uniformity is key in packaging. Uh, I don't know how they messed up. At least do, hey, this series has the same artist for all the characters. Next series, do a different artist if that's what you want to do. Um, but I do like that they gave that art, but I want it to be uniform. I want them to all look the same together would be uh, preferred in, in my book, uh, at least. Um, showed the top. You know, it's got the O1, got a little bit of clear. It's got the uh, famous G.I. Joe star. Of course, the legalese and the UPC on the bottom. Um, it showed you the back. And then how about the front with Roadblock? There he is. Looking great. You know, a lot of people griped, myself included. I, I should take a step back. When they first showed pictures of this line, I didn't know what to think. You know, I was so excited. Uh, my dream is basically giving us a nice, updated version of the 80s characters. But we all got to take a step back a little bit. That is primarily, I think most Joe fans, that's what they'd prefer. There is some that love the comic books. And maybe there's some younger people out there, younger than me, of course, that loved... Uh, the Pursuit of Cobra line from a few years ago, for example, which were kind of updated modern versions, very similar to this. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Hasbro, I'm sure they did their research. I'm sure they had focus groups out there or something. What do people want? I also do believe in my heart of hearts. You know, I talk about it and I've shown it before. I just recently did a, re, uh, a review of the new Beast fan channel exclusive uh, Marvel Legend. It's got the 90s Toy Biz packaging. Marvel Legends also made by Hasbro. We, we've seen the 3 and 3 Force retro coming to Walmart this fall. I do have to believe that somewhere along the line we're going to get a retro card, just like that Toy Biz card, just like Star Wars does with the G.I. Joes in the uh, traditional 80s cartoon. I think there's too much money to be left on the table to forget that one. I think they should have done something like that as a chase figure or something. I talk all the time. we got to hit home runs with G.I. Joe right off the gate. Give the people what they want. Make a strong showing with Series 1. Keep, make it so they're off the shelves constantly. Uh, I've seen full cases all week this week. I mean, I do go to more stores than the average person. But I could have had about six or seven sets of these just this week. Um, it's too early to tell if they're going to fly off the shelf. But I think if you had Cobra Commander, obviously Duke, Roblox, we had some heavy hitters in there. But we, need, we needed a Cobra Commander. You probably needed Storm Shadow in that first series. I know you don't want to blow your total load in the first series. But you got to win with that first series. Um, so I've rambled on about a lot of this stuff. Uh, I, I could talk G.I. Joe all day. That's just the fact. But let's get into this one. Here's Roadblock. You know, some people did not like the face. Uh, you know, it's just an updated version of Roadblock. I don't hate this one. I didn't have many gripes from the get-go about this. There's been gripes about his gun. Um, we'll get to that when we open it up. But there's Roadblock in package. Let's open this guy up real quick. Let's talk about him. See you later, packaging. There he is, right there in the packaging. I love that Roadblock's a big guy. He's got to be a big guy. Uh, you know, the weapon a lot of people complain about. That doesn't bother me as much as some. There's a lot. There's a segment of the G.I. Joe fan base, and I don't fault you guys for this, that want, you know, uh, traditional army weapons. Um, I don't really care that much about the traditional army weapons. I would, honestly, I'd prefer his original cartoon weapon uh, from the G.I. Joe uh, toys I grew up with. But this is kind of meeting in the middle. You know, G.I. Joe, we think all these weapons were real. Remember back to the cartoon, they, sh they shot red and blue lasers. So it was never 100% legit weapons. So I, I think we, we got to take a little step back there. Now this is a big, big weapon, that is for sure. And Roblox should have a big weapon. Uh, really cool colors on this. A little blue at the end, you know, to shoot the blue lasers out. You got to with the Joes. Um, but it's a big weapon. Um, he also comes with a knife. Let's see if I can get this out. A knife, and I believe this uh, little pouch thing connects to the weapon. Let's see. I mean, I don't know if it's a rail gun or what it's called exactly. A little thing. I believe it clicks in somewhere. Yep, right here on the back. Which is kind of interesting. Why put that in there? It clicked right in here. Why not just put that on there and call it done? I don't know why this really needs to be removable. I don't know if it really does anything for anybody. To me, a kid's just going to probably lose it. See you later. Oh, yeah. I mean, guys, this means so much to me. As a kid of the 80s G.I. Joe, just holding my first G.I. Joe figure in hand, uh, it's just a cool, cool moment, uh, a full circle moment. I've wanted six-inch G.I. Joes for a long time. Uh, you know, seeing Star Wars, Marvel Legends, what can be done with that? Uh, it's just awesome. 
I'm just very happy to have this finally. I hope it's a successful line. I hope we get all the ones we want. I need a Flint more than anything. You know, Flint is my favorite of all time. Um, I'm just very, very excited to have this figure. A little looseness in the foot right here, or the uh, leg, but I don't see any paint problems. Eh, a little bit, probably won't pick it up. A little bit on the side there, on the uh, green, a little black smudge. And there's Roadblock. I've got the hole in the back, like traditional G.I. Joes. Remember, they always had the hole in the back for their backpack. You get the sides, you get the front there. You know, a lot of people did not like the gold elements of the figure. Uh, I've seen people repaint it, seen them do other things. Um, I don't know. It doesn't bother me as long as that motif is taken throughout the line. And I, I know from Duke, off the top of my head, he had some of that. Um, it also has the, uh, right by his... See the little blue star up here? It's like a little G.I. Joe communicator, I guess, that they're going to have on a lot of the figures. I've heard people talk about that as well. Um, some people were wanting this vest on Roadblock to be removable. That doesn't bother me that much. I'm not one to play with them and, and do stuff. I, I don't know if a cloth version would be better. I think they did, I think they did what was best for this. Um, here's the knife that came with it. It goes right in his front here. I'll put that in. There you go. He's got his knife right in there. Uh, paint apps look good. I've seen some people switch heads out, uh, not liking this roadblock. I don't mind it. I, I don't mind a little bit of an update like this. Um, I've really grown on these figures. You know, when they were first shown, I said, I kind of, oh, what are they doing? What are they doing? But the more I've seen them, the more I look at them, the more I absolutely love them. I think it's like, we need an update. I'm not telling you, I don't want that retro line. We need that retro line. I'll buy that all day long. Um, but this is not bad. I, I I like it. I I'm a fan of this. I love the uh, six inch scale. That is the my new preferred scale in life. Um, it's a solid solid figure. You know, Roadblock was never my favorite. Uh, he was up there. He was okay, middle of the pack. I was always a Flint, Shipwreck, General Hawk. Uh, of course, you know the villains, uh, Serpentor, uh, Cobra Commander. I love them. I was never a huge uh, Snake Eyes guy. We'll get into that a little bit later, but. A little long-winded on this first review, kind of setting the stage, kind of setting the ground of what we're into. The rest are going to go a little bit faster for sure. But here's Roadblock. Let's move on to number two. All right, number two is here, and it's our man Snake Eyes. So I, I said in the last video, as a kid, Snake Eyes was not my favorite. I didn't hate him, but he was not like a lot of kids that just absolutely love Snake Eyes. I was, like I said, I was a Flint guy, a General Hawk guy. I love Bazooka, Alpine. There's a lot of guys I loved. Snake Eyes, I don't know. I, I can see why some people like him. Obviously, the Man of Mystery, the Mask. I always talk about wrestling figures. Masks and face painted wrestlers, they sell. Snake Eyes always had a mystique about him. You know, what, why doesn't he talk? What happened to him? What's he look like under the mask? Well, you comic book readers have seen that kind of stuff. But here's Snake Eyes. We know we got the Hasbro Pulse exclusive Snake Eyes early in the year. If I remember right, I think the first ever review I did on this channel was that Snake Eyes uh, review. So go back and look for that. Boy, that was probably rough. That was the first time I ever tried to do anything really in front of the camera. So I'm sure it's a terrible video. Um, but anyways, uh, it is what it is at this point. But uh, this Snake Eyes, uh, not terribly different. Just a few tweaks here and there. Uh, we'll show it right up there. Obviously the black suit, the iconic uh, Snake Eyes. I'm very happy that they didn't go uh, with uh, one of the crazier, like that later day Snake Eyes um, for the first one. I think the fans would have revolted. This is kind of the Snake Eyes I think we, most were looking for. So once again, that, that is one thing you could do to hit and start with a bang. Uh, there'd be a lot of feedback, uh, and not good feedback, if they would have went with one of the more obscure looks from uh, Snake Eyes. Um, but there he is. You can see him in pack. Black stands out. Uh, he seems to be uh, more in a case. Uh, there's more snake eyes than some of the rest in there, which is probably a good thing. Um, we're looking on the side. You can see the picture. A little dark artwork. I love down at the bottom. They got a picture of Timber. Obviously, that's his uh, wolf that he has as a pet, but no Timber in the pack, which I think was a big miss. Um, I think they should have had Timber in the set. Um, that's the iconic uh, snake eyes from the 80s, and that's uh, when people think of uh, snake eyes, they think of Timber as well. So, I'm sure Timber's coming. They'll save him. I hope they don't do like a, a chase version with Timber or something like that. But um, there you can see on the side his uh, file card designations and stuff like that. Um, as I said, he's number two in the series. Number two up top. Clear. 
legal stuff nobody cares about. And then, like I said, the back is the same for every single character. But let's open up old Snake Eyes. One of the heavy, heavy hitters of the Joe brand. Uh, I should say they do have uh, instructions in here, which do not need those. Um, inside, let's pull one of these out. We'll do this once as well, maybe. See you later. A little backing for the Joes. Uh, you know, some people do display their figures behind these things. Um, we'll see. I got to figure out. You know, I'm going to have a loose set and an on in box, on card, whatever you want to call it set for G.I. Joe. I'm all in. I'm going to buy two of every single one. Um, I love me some Joes. So there it is. So there is Snake Eyes. Doesn't get too much more iconic than that. I don't know if you could really... You can mess anything up, but I don't know if they could mess Snake Eyes up so much. I mean, it's classic. It's a classic version. Just a really, really cool... I love all black. Obviously, you know, heavy metal, black shirts. Uh, majority of my shirts are black. This Snake Eyes is uh, all decked out in black. Awesome backpack with the hole in the back. I mean, that brings you back. That's nostalgia right there. Fitting them in. Uh, just missing the O-rings in their uh, stomach. We'll knock Snake Eyes out. So far, no uh, ties or anything keeping the guys in there. Um, Snake Eyes coming with a lot of accessories, uh, as he should. Um, a lot of people were griping, and I do somewhat agree. Where's his Uzi? Why didn't he come with his uh, Uzi gun? That is a miss. Uh, my plan is, uh, some of you guys have seen, see you later. Some of you guys have seen, uh, there's an upcoming Punisher Marvel Legends figure where he comes with his motorcycle and he comes with some extra Uzis. I'll probably grab one of those Uzis. It should scale well with Snake Eyes. Um, so I'm happy to uh, cha transfer with love, share with kindness, whatever you want to call it. Um, I have heard complaints and I do see what people are talking about. The ab crunch is a little bit is loose. You know, that's a little annoying. You know, if I was a kid playing with Snake Eyes, I would be very, very frustrated with that. I'm frustrated as an adult collector that displays these. Um, but I've heard that gripe. I guess it's not the ab crunch that's loose. It's loose at the waist. Um, but that is annoying. Uh, it reminds me of the Marvel, uh, or not Marvel, Jack's TNA figures uh, with their frog-type loose legs. Um, but he does come with a little bandolier around him with some grenades. Uh, many a holster. Very, very cool. You know, I, that annoys me, though. I don't like that wiggliness. Hopefully, there's some better ones out there, but I've seen a lot of reviews and I heard from a lot of people that have had that issue with uh, their snake eyes. Like I said, he's got places to hold guns and knives. I've heard complaints about this knife holder, so let's test it out on mine. Grab his knife. People say the knife does not go all the way down, and boy, they are right. So that's another, uh, yeah, that's another mistake. So look at that. You can see right there on the side. Well, that's tough to see in the black, but his knife does not stick all the way in. So that is a big miss. I don't know how that gets past quality control. That is very, very disappointing. I mean, you don't want your knife sticking halfway out. So Roadblock was a pretty big hit for me. This one's a bit of a miss. That, uh, that issue there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think I got a wonky foot even. Yep. What are you doing to me, Hasbro? I'm I'm a I'm a lover of the Joe brand. Give me the good ones. Yeah, this foot, my right foot has no movement to it in the ankle. Um, it's off center. Yeah, it's totally off center. There's no. Oh, well, I got it. I got it to move at least. However, it's still just a little wonky. Um, hmm, hmm. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, so really some, some quality control issues out of the gate with this snake eyes. I know we'll get more snake eyes. Maybe it'll be improved, but you just don't want to see that. I mean, there's a lot of people that aren't hardcore Joes that are going to buy just everything. There's a lot of people that are going to buy the first series say, does it meet their criteria? Does it meet their standards? And they might see something like this and have a hard time with it. I hope not. I always say it. I want this Joe line. I want to go deep. I want to be like Star Wars and have over a hundred uh, different boxes, you know, um, but we'll see. Time is going to tell on that. Um, but there it is. There is Snake Eyes. Our little review, a mixed bag. I really enjoyed Roadblock. And it's funny, a Snake Eyes I thought was the best when I first saw pictures. And as of right now, he's probably tailing at the end with some of the quality control issues. Uh, I did say there's a couple of red highlights that break up the black. I, hard to see, though. Uh, a little uh, on his elbows and his uh, belt buckle and right at the center of his chest. 
a little bit of red. I like that that breaks up the monotony of the black color. Um, he also has his visor, uh, that snake eyes visor we all know so well. So there he is, a little loose, a little ankle issues, a little sheath, sheath problem with the knife. Yeah, I don't know. Middle of the road quality rise. Hopefully the rest get better. Let's dig into them. All right, number three in this series is my main man, Destro. I absolutely love Destro. One of my favorite villains. I love a lot of the villains with the Joes. Um, the only villain in season, or season, series one, Destro, the only villain released, which is interesting. A lot of people would have liked to have seen Cobra Commander also released, or probably a, a Cobra Officer or Cobra Trooper, even a Crimson Guard. Something we can army build. I do think for the Joe line, they need to have each series one army builder type figure i'm on the fence a little bit about army building i don't mind having two or three but who knows with gi joe as much as a nut as i am with gi joe like if they had a cobra officer i might buy i'll definitely buy two probably of every single troop but then if there's somehow a clearance happens they go down to 10 bucks or there's a bunch of deals or whatever i'll be army building i, I have a feeling i'm i gotta figure out a display pattern and how i'm gonna display um, but let's get back to Destro here. So here he is in the front. Probably the most iconic uh, outside of Snake Eyes or probably tied with Snake Eyes. Looking like the 80s figures we know and love. This is Destro. You see this, you think Destro. Funny story, five-year-old Kyle out in the backyard. Uh, it was a nice hot summer day. I had my Joes out. We were having a war out in the back. Had big Tonka trucks. They were at a construction site. Had Destro playing out there. I accidentally buried, well, I didn't accidentally, I buried Destro. Uh, my dad called me in for lunch, went in to come out for lunch. I could never find Destro again. And I still drive by my old childhood home, and I look at it, and I say, gosh, Destro's probably still buried in the ground out there. And I feel like maybe doing a late night, uh, uh, you know, I'll be like an uh, archaeologist or whatever. I'll, I'll dig Destro up in the middle of the night one of these nights. Maybe I'll grab my kids, I'll get the little lantern on my hat. It'll be great. It'll be a cool thing. But I always think of that. I said, man, that Destro's out there. And I was always sad I never got my childhood original Destro back. I later did, you know, they released a little updated version of Destro a few years after that first one. That is my favorite Destro from back in the day. Um, but anyways, this Destro, awesome, awesome, awesome. I hope the quality control is better than Snake Eyes. Uh, we'll see. You can see on the back, there's his file card, if that's what we're going to call those. The number three in the series. Legalese, of course, number three on the top. And then you got the sweet, look at that Destro. That, that is awesome, awesome artwork. Really, really cool. Uh, and the back is the same. Um, you know, they have the artwork in the front too up here. I didn't mention that in the other ones. The G.I. Joe logo across the bottom, so you know what you're buying. Um, it seems to be these are not peggable. Uh, at least a lot of the ones I've seen, they've been on the shelf like so, not hanging. Um, so that's interesting, no pegs, kind of like the Star Wars Black Series have the pegs, you know, you can hang them. So I don't know if that was Hasbro's move, a retailer move, or what, exactly how that worked. Um, but just kind of an interesting note, I guess I would say. So let's get Destro out. See you later. Oh man. Oh man. Awesome, awesome. There's Destro in his full glory. Looking great break him out we do know uh, we've already seen uh pimp daddy destro coming out here in the future um i've got two of those ordered as well interesting they're doing a destro repaint so early and so fast but boy look at cobra commander we got three cobra commanders coming by uh, fall of this year seems a little uh crazy but it is what it is you know what they say keep playing the hits don't bore us get us to the chorus you know we want uh, we want our cobra commanders that is for sure and man, I love this Destro uh, already. Just a slam dunk for me. Just brings me back to my childhood. I mean, if you're going to get, I guess we're on a way, all the way through, but as of right now, what I've seen compared to the box and open so far, this Destro is awesome. I absolutely love this Destro. Such an iconic character. You know, the silver mask, you know, we all know it. The red cowl that's almost like a cobra hood kind of. Um, he comes with this awesome uh, pendant, and it's removable. I guess you pop his head off, you can get it off, but it's movable. Awesome, awesome. Then the attention to detail of the 80s Cobra Commander. You got the little rockets on his arm, just like he had. You know, they're not removable, they're not nothing. They, they're just like the 80s one. Uh, just a decorative piece. Use your imagination. Uh, I always had him use those as a kid. He's got his holster on the side. There it is. Beautiful black coloring and the silver. 
and they're red, no ankle issues, typical articulation. You know, the beauty of Hasbro having the Joe license, the Star Wars license, the Marvel license, even the Power Ranger, there's so many parts and accessories they can pull and build from. They got a heck of a universe going. Uh, you know, and you know, there's talk of mask figures in the future. Will they be the same size as these? I can see them using them just like GI Joe. Uh, you know, they've been rolled over. We've seen mask figures with the Joes in the past. Uh, there's just Hasbro's firing on all cylinders right now. They really are. I don't know if they get their just due of what they're actually giving us. Um, Destro comes with his original gun. I mean, he had a version of this. Uh, this one obviously has some red accents to the black, which is really cool. Uh, put that in his hand. And then he's got his gold pistol, which will fit right here on the side, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Fits like a glove. And then let's see what's in. I believe this opens. Oh, it does. So there's his Cobra carrying case, or suitcase, luggage, briefcase, whatever you want to call it. And you open that bad boy up. And look at that. We got stacks of money in there. And then you got the uh, little computer in there. Uh, reminiscent, obviously much improved from the childhood one from the 80s. But just... Oh, man, this this is awesome. This could be one of my top figures of the year, even. Uh, it'd be tough to do a top, you know, 10 figures of the year. I'm sure I'll do some kind of video like that at the end of the year. But I got to think Destro is going to be on it. It's just they really took the old, brought it up to date, brought it into 6-inch. Just absolutely breathtaking for me. I mean, this, this is what makes me smile. This is what I look for in toys as I buy them in my old age. Uh, looking for that piece of my childhood to be updated and cooler, and that's what this is. Uh, I can't strongly recommend this one enough. Uh, if you're not even a G.I. Joe fan, I'm sure there's some of you guys out there that watch me primarily for wrestling stuff and aren't really big into G.I. Joe. Buy this G.I. Joe just to have. This is a cool desk piece. Uh, do something with it. I mean, awesome. If you're a child of the 80s that bought G.I. Joe, you, you owe it yourself to get this Destro. I can't sing the praises enough. I, I absolutely love it. I just love this figure. So there it is. We'll see if the next one can top this. It's going to be tough, that's for sure. This Destro is awesome. All right, next up, we got the number four figure in the set, and that is Duke. One of the heavy hitters, if not the most heavy hitter of the Joe clan. Not my favorite Joe uh, leader. I was always a Flint guy. Flint was the number two for a lot of the years of Joe. Uh, but I did respect Duke as a leader, and I always listened to what he said. We think back to the G.I. Joe movie of 1986 where he took the uh, Serpentor snake right to the heart for his brother, Lieutenant Falcon. Holy cow, was that ever a, a tearjerker for young Kyle. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I thought Duke was dead for sure. Uh, he was supposed to be, later changed because of the uh, feedback from the Optimus Prime death in the Transformers movie. Uh, but if you guys haven't seen that 86 G.I. Joe movie, go back and see it. The greatest opening to any movie ever. Just unbelievable opening for that. And I get goosebumps to this day every time I watch that opening of that movie. Uh, look it up on YouTube. Have a quick clip. It, it's worth a watch uh, to get you fired up for G.I. Joe. That is for sure. But here is Duke, and it's a modern updated Duke. Uh, and it's a younger Duke. And I don't know if that's just me being, uh, as a kid, you thought Duke was an older guy because you're six or seven. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Duke is uh, 40 years old. I don't know. Uh, but this is a much younger Duke. He seems younger than a leader should be, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't know. I always think a, a Joe leader needs to be an older guy. I mean, how is some young kid going to move up the ranks to the top of the Joe league right like that? And that's This Duke seems a little bit young, but uh, my first impressions were good for this one. A lot of people didn't like this one at first. Uh, I like the head scan. I thought they got it just spot on as far as a, a younger look. If I guess that's what they're going for, but I thought it was the best they could have done with a younger look. And I also thought the uh, modern updated hairdo was pretty cool. But we'll get into that when we open him up. But there's the package. You can see the little uh, artwork there on the front. I don't know about this side artwork. This one's kind of cheesy. Look at the top. You see him. It's just, uh, I don't know, not the best artwork. Probably not my favorite. And you can see the file card stuff, which is all nonsense to me at this point because I haven't went to the website and memorized all this stuff. And like we said, he's the fourth in the series. And you got the back, which is the same for all of them. The four at the top, the legalese, nothing you guys really haven't seen. But there is Duke. They even got the scar. I forgot to mention he has a scar right up here. Um, it probably won't come in on a close-up on camera, but uh, I don't know. I, I love this Duke. When I saw it, there's a lot of people that really dogged on this one. Uh, not quite me. There's a few things. See you later. 
There's Duke in all of his glory in the cellophane plastic. Now let's pop this guy out. Let's see here. Oh. Get his little pistol out. The backpack. See you later. All right. Yeah, it still sticks for me. I like this Duke head. I think it's a modern haircut. You're trying to modernize the Joes. You can't keep them all in their 80s. Uh, one guy can have a mullet, and it's cool, but they all can't have mullets. Um, so, you know, he's got the uh, shaved on the side, long on the top. The old Kyle Peterson 2018-2019 haircut, as I like to call it. Uh, that's what he's rocking. Um, a sweet scar up there on his head. Uh, probably the best modern hairdo figure as far as current uh, hairdos of the day. We're talking 2020 hairdos. I don't know of another figure that has done this. They haven't done it in Marvel Legends. They haven't done it in Star Wars. Maybe there's nothing else they could really do it in, but I think that's a, a pretty cool and it really updates the line. It brings it to modern times. Um, so I am all in on this hairdo. I'm all in on his shirt and his outfit. I think the, the darker green and the tan looks awesome. I think it really pops. I don't think you can go with the olive drab, old school 80s. Uh, save that for the retro line. This is what we need in an updated one. I know a lot of people don't like the like uh, shin guard stuff like that. I, I understand that. I think the blue and it's just a it's a little different. But I can look past it even. I mean, it's probably the weakest link of the figure. That is for sure. Um, but it's not as bad as people. I think sometimes people want to be negative just for the sake of negative. They look for the, the worst things first when you got to always look at the positive, look at the positive side is what I say. Um, but as far as things go, that is probably the only thing I don't really care for is the shin guards and knee things. Um, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. It's not terrible though. It's not terrible. Uh, you know, it gets a little annoying. I think with the, uh, loose, uh, belt and the side holster and the strap across the front. But I'm not one that's going to play with these. If I was playing with them, it might get in my way and be annoying. These are going to be displayed cool on my shelf somewhere. Um, so I like that. And I, I like the colors. A lot of people say they don't like the green, like the backpack green. They want it more of a military style. And once again, I think it just has to be updated. I think we had to, at the end of the day, it's a toy. It's got to be flashy. It's got to, it's got to capture the eye. And I don't know if we went straight military garb, if that would work. I don't know if that's uh, how things would go. Um, but it is what it is, but I like this Duke. I actually like this Duke, uh, more out of the package, just like Roblox. I like it more out of the package than I like, uh, when I saw the promotional pictures and then when I've seen it in the package, um, I'm just, uh, I don't know. I don't know if my Joe bias is coming through. Some people might say, Kyle, you got a Joe bias and maybe I do. Like I, I've said it a million times. It's so near and dear to my heart. Um, I just want updated GI Joe and maybe I'm looking past some things. But I'll do anything to make this work with the Joes. Um, I just absolutely love it. I think you can't go wrong with this Duke. I said the same thing about Destro. I put the Destro above this one just because of the iconic uh, way Destro is. But you need this one as well. I think this is another must-have in the line. There's the backpack. Got a little shovel built in. It does not come out. But another strong, strong uh, figure. Uh, yeah, dare I say must-have. I, I think this is another must-have. This is kind of like uh, Star Wars. You can't have Star Wars toys and not have Luke Skywalker. You need the leader of the Joes, Duke. I know some people say, well, General Hawk's the leader, and he is too. So you need General Hawk as well. I love General Hawk, but uh, Duke is the iconic first leader of the Joes that we saw in the cartoons and stuff. So you gotta have, you got to have Duke. This is a, a must-have. We're going to add this to the Destro must-have. Roadblock kind of in there. Um, and then we talked about Snake Eyes. But there is Duke. We got one more, and that is Scarlet. All right, let's bring home Series 1 with the fifth character in the set, and that is Scarlet. Um, actually, full disclosure, I did not have Scarlet as a kid. Uh, I don't know the reason why, but I did not have her as a kid. I was always a Lady J guy. That's probably because she was with Flint. Scarlet was more with Duke in the cartoons. The comic book, there was a little bit of a love triangle with Snake Eyes, Scarlet, and Duke. Um, but I never got Scarlet as a kid, and I really don't know why. But there's the artwork on the side. Um, you know, little ninja stuff at the top, kind of her snake eyes time. A little gunner spot, and then Cobra Commander down at the bottom. <coughs> or Cobra Commander, that's her knee. <laughs> I missed, I missed uh, took her knee for Cobra Commander's face. I got Cobra Commander on the mind, I guess. The back we've seen, file card on the side. Number two. 
number two, number five, sorry. And then we got the legal ease on the other side. So Scarlet, uh, I don't know, probably my least excited to get in the line. Um, nothing against Scarlet, I guess, but you know, Duke and some of these other ones are higher on my priority list, I guess I would say. An okay figure from the pictures. This is the one I kind of had the most issues with, and we'll get into it when we get it open. But uh, there's Scarlet. We can see the artwork there on the front. I don't know. I don't know. Let's open it up. Let's open it up and get to the bottom of this uh, Scarlet figure here. See you later. There she is in the plastic. We'll get her uh, fancy crossbow out. She comes with uh, three knives. So, there's, those are out. Right. Pop her out of the package here without breaking anything. See you later. Whoa. So this is uh, the first female figure we've seen in the line as well. Um, you know, obviously we got Baroness coming as the second. So it'll be interesting if they keep the same body molds. I, I assume they will for the majority. Definitely not terrible. I mean... The big gripe I've seen online and other reviewers, and I kind of have it myself, is her face. I get they've updated it, very similar to Duke. I felt like it kind of went the wrong way. It doesn't feel like Scarlet to me. I've seen a lot of customizers out there pop off Black Widow heads. Uh, there's a lot of Black Widow figures with that Black Widow movie coming from Hasbro. Uh, they've popped those heads off, and I might try some of that myself. Um, we'll see. I might uh, take a peek and see which head do I like best, but I like the orange. It's not as red as it was back in the day, I guess you would say. It's more of an orange, which is a little bit different. Uh, I love the forearm. She's got the stars on her forearm. If you think back to her original figure and you think back to the cartoon and the comics, she had those on there, so that is a great nod to the past. She does have the Joe communicator like all the Joes have, so that's a running thing. The unity of the line, keeping the team together. Uh, I think that is very cool. Um, I don't see a spot for her knives, which is interesting. Oh, I take that back. There's, yeah, we got a spot for her knife right here on her uh, chest bandolier or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't know if it fits in there. Let's see if another one does. It might be knife specific. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, very interesting. And her crossbow here. Hmm. It's very interesting. She doesn't have any arrows. I thought there was arrows with this, but I guess not. Oh, her crossbow does break into two pieces. So you got to put that together. That is a little annoying. Now can I even get it back in? I'll have to play with it a little bit. Nope. It fits, but I don't know why you would have this break apart. I don't remember her child, my childhood, uh, the childhood 80s version or whatever. I mean, I've obviously played with it and seen it. I don't remember that coming apart. Um, but that's kind of an annoying feature, I think. Um... There it is. I also feel like this crossbow is a little small. I felt like it could be a little bit bigger. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Do these knives in the back? Let's see. We're, we're learning together here how this uh, figure operates. So these knives stick in the back. So I guess she can, you know, come from behind and throw knives if she needs to is what we got going on there. See, and that breaks right off. So that's going to get annoying. I've heard of some people gluing that, I believe. I don't know if I'll do that or not. You can see on her back, she's got the arrows down below. They are not removable. And then you can put the uh, knife in the top part. I don't know. It's an interesting figure. It's probably the weakest one in the set, I guess. Um, I don't know. This Snake Eyes is down there at the bottom too, unfortunately. I think if Snake Eyes quality control of his abs and looseness, I think... I don't know. They're about a tie for the bottom for me. Uh, if I had to put them in order, I think Destro, Duke, Destro, Duke, Roblox, Scarlet Snake Eyes, pretty much even. Um, but not terrible. There's no looseness here. Um, ankles are tight. Ankles are good. A little smudge on her shin guard. Um, kind of has the shin guard thing going on like Duke. Uh, doesn't really bother me a ton. Um, I guess the worst part about her is the head. Uh, there's something about the head. It's kind of the opposite of Duke. The younger Duke, I really enjoyed that. This one, the younger kind of hipper, it just doesn't work. I wish it was a darker red. Um, 
I think that's why we're seeing so many people out there switch those Black Widow heads or Jean Grey heads, uh, you know, famous red-haired characters that could go with this, putting those on there. Um, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see where that Scarlet goes and see how it marinates. You gotta, I gotta let it sink in for a little bit. But as of right now, a must-have for me. I need to have the whole set, but not my favorite uh, in the line. But Scarlet is. It's important to get uh, some females in the line. As the G.I. Joe, uh, the females were the backbone of the G.I. Joe army. You have... Scarlet's, Lady J, Cover Girl. Um, you also got Jinx. Uh, there's a lot of them. Even on the bad guy, uh, guy side, you got Zariana, you got Baroness. Uh, there's a lot out there, and they need to be represented in this line as well. Um, so it's good to see Scarlet in the line. Personally, would prefer Lady J, but I'm hoping we get a just a slam dunk set with like Law and Order, Flint, uh, and Lady J, Shipwreck. Boy, that'd be a heavy hitter set, but. There is uh, Lady J. So let's wrap it all up. Let's show them all together and, and talk about it. Well, there you have it, guys. G.I. Joe Classified Series by Havs Bro. Series 1. Uh, many, many, many series to come. I am in, uh, fingers crossed, we're hoping for uh, a very good series. Uh, I was excited for this, as I've said. It really did uh, blow it out of the park once I opened these up and had them in my hands. Like I said, Snake Eyes uh, with some quality control issues that uh, I hope get updated or fixed in the future maybe. Um, I don't know. That That's pretty disappointing. Uh, and he's such a most wanted iconic character for a lot of people. I hope his quality control issues don't turn others off. Uh, Scarlet So-So, another weak link in the set. But Duke, Roadblock, Destro, I absolutely love. I got Destro here on my Cobra throne. It's just waiting for Cobra Commander to be released. I showed this in one of the weekly purchases videos uh, a week or so ago. Um, check those out, but uh, this Cobra Throne is really cool. I'm not sure if I'm going to paint this or not. I kind of like the stone look to it. Um, as you guys can see, I always talk about it. Ringside collectible stands, uh, the way to go for your figures. A cheap stand compared to some of those expensive NECA ones and stuff. Nothing against those. I just don't want to spend my figure budget on NECA stands or any kind of stands. I want a cheap, versatile stand that works, and that's what these ringside ones do. So they do work for the Joes. You can see them right here. I'll also uh, point out there uh, my version of Timber. Uh, I bought him at Michael's. I think Poco, P-O-C-O -O is the brand. Perfectly scaled Timber for now. I strongly recommend. I think it was like $5. You can get coupons for Michael's online. If you got Snake Eyes, you need Timber along with it. That is the perfect Timber as of right now until Hasbro releases one. But there it is, G.I. Joe Series 1. I wanted to uh, do this review once I got them all in hand. And there's a lot of collectors out there, probably you guys included. Destro seemed to take forever. I got all these from Amazon right away. Destro's pre-order on Amazon was really weird. Didn't come through till much later. Uh, finally found one in the stores uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So wanted to wait till I had them all in hand to open them. So I'm, I'm behind some other reviewers out there. But uh, for the love of Joe, I had to do this. I owed this. This video was... Uh, as much as for you guys, this video is for me because I love, love G.I. Joe. I'm very, very excited. I hope the line continues like I've said too many times. But there it is. You guys give me some feedback on this G.I. Joe video. Do you guys not care about G.I. Joe? Are you excited for this? Are you going to pick and choose? Is this something you're just going to let roll on by? I hope a lot of people are out there. I hope some new Joe collectors jump in with this, not just the people like me that have been around forever. I hope young kids jump into this Joe line and get excited about it. Uh, but you guys tell me in the comments uh, what your thoughts on the G.I. Joe line. Put them in order, uh, whatever you guys want to do. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Um, so that's it. But please uh, like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out videos every single day. And, hey, there'll be Joe videos to continue as they come through. Um, but I got videos every day for you guys. So there it is. There's G.I. Joe Classified Series, Series 1 review by Kyle Peterson. Until next time, we'll see you guys all real soon.